just so weird. It's been so long, I don't even know what to do. Let me just get myself cozy, it's so hot in here. It's already been three months. I woke up on April 19th, went to work thinking it would be a normal day, but at noon, I gave my notice saying I was quitting effective immediately. I never really mentioned my job either on here or any other socials because for one, I want to keep my work and my social media separate, but for two, I was also extremely embarrassed about this job. It was not even like an entry-level job that you get straight out of university. It was just an HR job that anyone can do with like a regular high school degree. I packed my bags and said goodbye to my family, flew from Montreal, Canada to London, United Kingdom. University was a really tough time in my life and looking back, I wouldn't even say that it was academically challenging, it was more so that it was so boring and unstimulating to me. I would say I don't have many regrets in life, but not quitting university to save my mental health is one of my biggest regrets. Regardless, I ended up graduating in the midst of COVID. I got my first big girl corporate job working in insurance, moved to my first big girl apartment in the city. It was the beginning of a new chapter for me. Not too long after starting that job, I went through the biggest depressive episode of my entire life. I knew I had gone through depression before, but nothing of that scale. I was experiencing pretty much every single symptoms I was sleeping 12 hours a day and yet I still felt like I was too tired to go through my regular work day. I vividly remember that it was on my 25th birthday. I had a doctor's appointment. I had driven all the way back to the suburb. My doctor had asked me a few questions and got me diagnosed with clinical depression. Surprise. And then she put me on a work leave for a month, which turned into two then thrown into four and this is my first time talking about it outside of the people in my life it was so difficult to admit to myself that i needed the help i wasn't doing well for a long time and i felt like i had failed at life how come my parents have been able to work corporate for decades and yet i can barely make a year into it after four months of rest i came back to work but i already knew i wanted to quit i knew the minute i came back this is just not for me and i was pondering on what my next move should be and then I received a pretty life-changing email. The email read, Dear Nihao, due to the postponement of your application during the travel ban of COVID-19, we are honored to present you with the opportunity to become a language assistant in the UK for the school year of 2022 and 2023. How this came to be is that the year I graduated, I had applied to become a French assistant to teach French abroad. However, the year I was supposed to go was the year of the pandemic, so they canceled the entire program altogether because of the traveling restrictions but they had kept my application they told me it could be reused for the next year and so when i received that email asking me if i was still interested in going to teach abroad of course i said yes and so in a matter of a month since my comeback i found myself quitting my job packing my entire apartment moving back home saying goodbye to my family moving abroad to cambridge in england and starting a new life. When I first arrived in Cambridge, I was terrified. I thought to myself, like, why would you do this? Why would you leave your family, everything you've known? For what? To experience something new? Well, good for you. The new thing you've experienced is anxiety to a level you didn't even know was possible. But as they say, every good things take time. I started working, I started getting familiar with my environment, my colleagues became my really close friends. I signed up for the gym. I was going to London every other week. And it only took me about two months and I knew the town of Cambridge like the back of my hand. And then anxiety turned into excitement and happiness. I felt so fulfilled. I loved my routine. I fell in love with my life there. And before I knew it, my time abroad was already coming to an end. My visa was about to expire. I had gone through a nasty friendship breakup which left me thousands of dollars poorer. And I was dreading coming back home and living with my parents again but there i was one last time hearing the tfl announcement on my way to heathrow airport the minute i landed back in montreal i was so heartbroken i knew that i had just lived 
probably the most special year of my entire life but I also knew that what made it so special was the fact that it was temporary I was very aware that the way I was living over there was in no way a normal life working 15 to 20 hours a week and going to the gym four times a day seeing my friends every other day but a voice inside me told me to snack back into it you had your fun now it's time to face real life again you can't forever run away from adulthood and responsibilities who is going to pay your bills so this time i was about to get serious and i would find a job in my field of study despite majoring in hr i had never worked in that field when i graduated it was kind of a weird time and the job i found in insurance was actually actually paying higher than any entry-level jobs in HR. But now that I was back, the job market had changed and inflation was through the roof and I needed a job ASAP. I was applying manically to everything. I even started a few months back when I was still in Cambridge, but unfortunately nothing turned out. I was so desperate, like I had moved back with my parents living in the suburbs. I absolutely hated it. Genuinely, I was going crazy. I could not do it anymore. But then a week later, I landed did a job working in HR for a big hospital. I wasn't too enthusiastic about it, but I knew that I was in no position to be picky since I had no previous work experience in the field. The first month of training was fine. Already at the second month, I was already getting bored and I thought that could be troublesome but I still remained working at that job for upwards to six months. But at the six month mark, I could not deal with the commute anymore. And so that's when I decided to move back to the city and so I left the suburbs and moved in with a roommate. The following months truly felt like a fever dream. I wasn't sure if it was depression or burnout but something was truly off. I felt hopeless, like surely this cannot be the way people live. I know that life isn't always fun and I don't expect it to be but living this way and wishing your life away just cannot be the answer. I just really wanted to quit at that point. This feeling grew bigger and bigger inside of me every day. It was harder and harder to go to work every day. But especially when my boss, without getting into too much detail, when she gave me a specific job that is so incredibly repetitive and dehumanizing, that's when I completely lost interest. I really started asking myself, like, am I happy with my current situation? And then I realized I'm not. I'm unstimulated at work. I can barely make ends meet even with this job. I didn't really like the environment I was working in and I knew that even the department wasn't really made for me and that's when i realized this job is just not benefiting me in the slightest my entire life it really has felt like i was always behind as if i'm having a hard time catching up to everyone's speed i never knew what i wanted to do with my life but i knew what i didn't want to do and i thought that perhaps proceeding by elimination would be an effective process to find what i'm supposed to do and that's how i got to where i am today i'm glad i went through what i went through i don't regret the choices i made they've led me to the person i am today and I'm extremely content with who I am at my very core. I'm glad I met the amazing people along the way as well. My only regret to this day is not listening to myself when I would show signs of discontentment. I regret thinking that pushing down my feelings would be the answer and it would just make them disappear. I regret listening to external voices left and right telling me what to do. I regret not believing in myself and refusing myself the very idea of dreaming of what I could do outside of societal expectations. I deeply regret not being in tune with my inner thoughts and drowning out the noise with capitalistic coping mechanisms. I really have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going, uh, but my entire life I feel like I've always been listening to people telling me what to do. And I, I tried, I really did, and it hasn't worked out. So now I'm choosing to have faith, follow my dreams, as silly as it sounds. And yeah, I just hope that you guys will hopefully find it interesting enough to stick around because ultimately this right here is really the only thing I've ever wanted to do with my life. Wait. I'm take a picture of you filming me. It's really sick. Smile. You said smile. Yeah. You will love the end of the video.
Thank you.